And we know what time it is. It's time for our responsive reading. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture, scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Amen. You may be seated and turn back to John chapter 5, verses 40 through 47. A mom who was exasperated because her naughty son had gotten on her last nerve, uh, sent her son to his room to teach him discipline. He had been given grace on cleaning his room that uh, he had supposed to have done, but she gave him grace. The boy stormed up the stairs to his room and defiantly hid under his bed. When the boy's father got home, he went up to check on the wayward boy and to talk to him. He entered the room, but he didn't see the boy immediately. He wandered around the room for a moment and didn't look under the bed initially. But when he did look under the bed, he saw a couple of eyes looking out at him. Yeah. Then he heard his son say, hi, dad. Is mom trying to discipline you too? <laughs> the father laughed and said, no, no, son. Mom's not trying to discipline me. She's trying to teach you to make the right decisions and make the right choices uh -huh. so that you can do better and act appropriately. Now you need to go apologize to her. She had a long and difficult day and you come up and clean your room. And the boy, after hearing his father did so, went down and apologized to his mother, kissing her amidst repentant tears. Training children can be a challenge. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But it's something that we know we have to do. Yeah. Trying to train people to know and act on the right information to make the right choices is also a challenge. Yes, it is. As any pastor. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, amen. In this fifth chapter of John, Jesus was trying to intentionally listen, confront. The, and reach the religious leaders. That's why he healed that man on the Sabbath. And when we preached on it, we talked about how he gave that man favor before faith. That man had no faith. That's right. Jesus healed him on the Sabbath because he being God knew it was going to bring up a controversy between him and the religious leaders. But he wanted that. Yeah. Because he wanted that for the opportunity in John 5. That was the turning point. Yeah. In the relationship of Jesus and the religious leaders, and Jesus was apologetic. Now, like I said, he wasn't apologizing, <laughs> but he gave them the reasons why they should have recognized who he was and who had sent him and what he had come to do. Yeah. You see, like I said before, when the wise man came to Jerusalem and asked the people where Jesus would be born, way back in the time of Herod. They looked up in the scripture, told them where they were going to be born, and the wise men left by themselves. Yeah. Nobody went because they didn't believe. But old church, old church, Jesus wanted these people to believe. Yes, sir. So he, he wanted them to, to hear the things he said so they could make the right decisions about his witness, about God the Father's witness, and about the Word's witness of him and to him and we can learn from this how as people who are coming to know the truth from the whole counsel of God uh -huh. how we can make the right choices amen? amen how we can make the right choices number one we can make the right choice for life and honor and that choice is Christ verses 40 through 41 Second, we can make the right choice for love and honor, and that is through the Father, verses 42 to 44. And then third and finally, we can make the right choice for listening and humility, that is through the Bible, verses 45 through 47. But first, let's look at making the right choice for life and honor, verses 40 and 41. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. 
I do not receive honor from men. Jesus here is wanting them to understand that they have chosen not to honor him, chosen not to come to him. And there's nothing intrinsically that will give them eternal life because in verse 39, you see, he says, you search the scriptures. Yes, sir. For in them, you think you have eternal life and they are those that witness or testify me. about me. Yes, sir. For example, that classic portion of Isaiah 53 that the Ethiopian eunuch was reading when he was coming back from Jerusalem, going back to Ethiopia, and he was met by Philip, and he said, who is this man, the writer talking about, and yes, Philip sir. preached Jesus. Yes, sir. He was saying, Isaiah 53 is saying, the suffering servant of yes. Jehovah was Jesus. Yes, sir. And so, and so Jesus says, look, it, you don't, you won't understand this. You will miss the point of all that you think you think you have if you don't see that it's talking about me. Uh huh. But you're not willing to come. You're not making the right choice. Come on with it. That you might have life. There are people today that are not making the right choice. They won't come to life. That's right. To Jesus Christ. And remember what the Bible says in First John 5, 11 to 13. And the testimony is this. That God has given us eternal life. Yeah. And this life is in no one, nowhere else but his son. That's right. Verse 12, he who has the son has life. Yeah. And he who does not have the son of God does not have life. Does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you, may that you know. have eternal life. Yes, sir. You can know you have eternal life. You can be assured. Yes, sir. You can know without a doubt yes, that you have sir. eternal life. If you have the son. Son of God. As the son presents himself. And see, yes. that's what was stopping the religious leaders. They didn't, receive, they didn't receive him as he was presenting himself. And as the father witnessed too. And as John witnessed too. And as the word witnessed too, they wouldn't receive it. But notice verse 41, Jesus says, I do not receive honor from men. Uh -huh. Or literally, Jesus was saying, you won't give me the honor that's due me. Come on. He, because he knows their hearts, and he knows what they're thinking, and he knows what makes them tick. You remember in, in John 2, 20, uh, 3 to 25, it says that Jesus, that some people, after he had done a miracle at Canaan, making water to wine, it says some of them believed in him. Yeah. But it says, but Jesus didn't believe in them. That's right. For he knew what was in man. In other words, his heart wasn't right. That's right. And he did not need that anyone tell him what is in man. And so Jesus knew that they didn't want to give him the honor that was due him. You see, Jesus was worthy of honor. Yes. He was worthy because uh, Jesus uh, said, look, he only took honor and glory from God. From God. God gave it to him. And that's the best honor you could ever get. Amen. It's the honor that comes from God. Amen. You see, we shouldn't, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, we shouldn't worry about trying to get honor from men. That's right. Because we look for the honor. We look for honor for God. And so these Jews probably thought Jesus was upset because they didn't honor him. But Jesus wanted them to understand. Jesus didn't care about what they thought. That's right. He didn't really care about it. And so... And then he says, look, I don't accept glory or honor from you humans the way you all do. You see, church, we should not care when we know, listen, when we know we are doing right, we should not care, we should not care what people say. Amen. We should not care what people say about us Amen. when we're doing what's right. That's right. Because sometimes people who don't have your best interest in heart that's right. Are going to say about the things about you when you're doing what's right. That's right. And it won't be flattery. That's right. It won't be complimentary. That's right. It'll be negative. Yeah. But Jesus says to them, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. You remember Jesus said that in Luke 16, 15. Because people who are fair sick, the religious leaders of Jesus' day, they, they would not acknowledge that they really were sinful or sinful. You remember in Luke 18, 
when Jesus told the parable of the of the uh, the Pharisee and the sinner, the Pharisee prayed with himself. He didn't pray to God, and he boasted about how good he was. Yeah, he said, "I ain't like this guy. I, 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 I'm God. I don't even really need you." Come on, and that's the way they were. They would pray standing on the street corners and pray loudly. Yeah, Jesus said in Matthew six chapter one. So they wanted to be heard. Yeah. They wanted to be seen of men. Yeah. And Jesus said, you know, the, the problem with that is you looking for honor from people. Yeah. So they was looking for honor from people. You know people do that in church all the time. Ah, oh, come on. They do that in church. Come on. I, I, I thank God that we don't have that problem here. Amen. But you go to church and sometimes and... And if folks don't get the glory they're looking for, they will be upset with the pastor. Come on. They'll be upset with the few people. They'll be upset with the choir director. They'll be upset with whoever it is that didn't give them the honor they thought they should have got. Because some people sing for people's honor. Some people give for people's honor. Some people serve for people's honor. But that's the wrong reason because Jesus says you don't do it to impress men. Right. Because he said, if, you, if that's the reason why you do it, you have your reward. Your reward is only impressing me. But, 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 but you won't have no reward with God. It's like the guy who said to his wife, Oh, baby, I'll take care of you because I have to. That ain't going to be a reward for him. <laughs> Experience, amen. It's only a reward when he says, I do that because I, I love to. Come on. I want to. I'm motivated. Amen. Yes, sir. And so we don't want to be seen doing things to get honor from men. That's right. And I'll tell you, as a preacher, that is something that can happen to preachers. Come on. To preach, to try to get glory from men. But church, as I told you before, and I'll tell you again, I don't preach for you. Amen. As best I can, I preach to please God. Amen. Paul wrote to Timothy, study to show yourself approved. A workman. Not to men, but to unto God. That's right. A workman, in other words, you diligently studying, exegeting the scripture, a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed. Right. Ashamed right. before who? Ashamed yeah. before God. That's right. But rightly or accurately handling, explaining, yeah. accurately teaching the word of truth. So Paul said this to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you. I did not come with eloquence of human wisdom yeah. as I proclaimed to you the testimonies about God. Uh -huh. So Paul says, look, I didn't come and I didn't, I didn't put forth uh, a, 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 a teaching that was done, listen, that was done with eloquence or human wisdom, in other words, to impress. Uh -huh. <laughs> because it says, for I, 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 I determined to know nothing among you but Jesus Christ Jesus. and him crucified. Yes, sir. In other words, Paul says, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just trying to inform you of the truth about Jesus. Uh -huh. And that's what we have to do. We have to preach Jesus. Yeah. Now, of course, we know from our tradition as African Americans, some of our teaching, some of our preaching traditions have this element of trying to impress the crowd. Yes, sir. You ever been in a service where you know that the preacher is hooping uh. to get the crowd to go into a frenzy? Yeah. Not over, not necessarily over the truth, but over how he says the truth. Amen. Amen. I don't have a problem with a hooper, uh. but I do have a problem if it's all about the hoop. Come on. Because it shouldn't be about the hoop. No, it should be about the truth. Amen. Amen. So you know when people are spiritual, when they can get something, whether you hoop or not. That's right. Because it's all about the word. Yes, it is. And whether you told them the truth about Jesus. And you told them the truth about Jesus. Because see, if you are pump you up Christian, watch out. Which sometimes baby Christians are. Yeah. They go to church and get pumped up. Yeah. But if you a pumpy up Christian, you gotta go to church and get pumped up. Well, you gonna go six days without getting pumped up again. That's right. But when you go to church, is to get equipped up. In Ephesians four, it says God gave the pastor for the equipping of the saints. 
for the work of the ministry so you get equipped up so you can do the ministry sometimes to yourself. Yes, sir. So you can minister to yourself so you can so you can be built up. It's to build up the body of Christ. There's nothing wrong with feeling good over the truth. That's right. But you gotta understand, you have to learn how to feed yourself. Yeah. From the word of truth. And when you get to that point, all that matters is whether the preacher delivers the goods. Amen. The goods about Jesus Christ and yes, his truth. Sir. But sometimes people get caught up over, over wanting honor and glory. And it can affect a whole lot of relationships, church. It can affect our families. The families could be neglected uh, because people are looking for glory and fame and power and wealth. And so, and so the, the person who wants success neglects their family. Don't spend time with them. Yeah. But we have to understand, what does God say about such pursuits? He says they're vain glory. Yeah. He says in Proverbs 25, 27, for men to seek their own glory uh -huh. is not glory. That's right. In other words, if, if I want to do stuff for the wrong reasons to impress the wrong people, so people can see how much I got, where I live, my address, yeah. How big my house, how pretty my car, that's vain glory. Yeah, it is. Because that doesn't mean anything about who you are or what you are about as a person. Amen. 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 Because you can have all that stuff that's and right. be as mean and nasty that's right. as you can be. That's right. And nobody don't want to be around you. Amen. Amen. The people who, who, who smile in your face uh, throw, <laughs> throw knives in your back right. when, you, when your back is turned. Amen. Amen. Because they don't respect you. But you see, here's what the Bible says. No matter what we do, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink. Yes, sir. That's the most mundane, everyday, common things you do. Yes, sir. Or whatever you do, do all to the, to the glory of God. See, we should be living to honor God. Amen. That should be our effort to make Jesus proud. Yeah. You remember when 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 the father testified about Jesus when when he opened up heaven, when Jesus was baptized, and it, and, and it says, the Father said, this is my beloved Son, in, the home, in whom I'm well, well pleased. Please. You see, we, we want to live like Jesus. Yeah. To please God. Yeah. Because if we try to please others like the religious leaders, get honor from people, if we don't get it, what happens? Huh. We get jealous. Yeah. And the Bible says that envy and jealousy is like rottenness to the bone. Yes, it is. And it was jealousy. You remember, it was jealousy and hatred that led to the first murder. Because Cain, yes. he was jealous of his yes. brother Abel. Yes, he was. He then hated his brother Abel. Yes. And then he murdered his brother Abel. Yes, he did. Amen? Amen. So the Pharisees were jealous of Jesus because he could do things they couldn't do and they couldn't deny it. That's right. They knew what he did was undeniable. And even you remember when Jesus went before Pilate in Matthew 27, 18, it says that even Pilate could see that the Pharisees wanted Jesus crucified only because they were jealous of him. Oh, church. Oh, church. <laughs> we don't want to be like the religious leaders. Amen. They had the wrong motivation, the wrong reasons to doing things in our life. Instead, we want to honor Jesus. Amen. We want to honor him in every area of our life. And you know one way to honor him is to live out what the Bible further explains that Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount. Come on. You remember the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5 down to the end of Matthew 7? Uh -huh. He on. started out, and I'll just give a little quick summary. If you do what Jesus teaches here, you will honor God and you will bless your life. Amen. He says, blessed are the poor blessed in spirit, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, blessed are those who know they need to be saved. Yes. Because they're going to get it. Yeah. He says, blessed, verse 4, are the, those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In other words, those same people who have a heart of contrition is like what David said in Psalm 51, a broken and contrite heart. God will not despise. In other words, if your heart is after God's heart, you want to do right. And even though sometimes you make a mistake and you do the wrong thing, but you want to do right, God says. Come on. You might mourn, but you'll be comfortable. Come on. 
He says, first, blessed are the meek, are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. In other words, they'll, get, they'll be exalted, they'll be glorified. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, yeah. for they will be filled. Yeah. Blessed are the merciful, for they, show, they will be shown mercy. Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So, so, so we should desire holiness and righteousness. That's Don't mean right. we're perfect, but it means we're looking at we're moving in the right direction. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children, the children of, God. of God. Do we make peace? Come on. People around us is our. Do we have a peaceful space Come around on. us? He says, "Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." And then I'll go on and just kind of quickly summarize. In chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, he teaches that we should be salt and light. Yes, sir. So we should impact our world. We should make a difference where we are. In, five, in, in chapter 5, verses 17 through 20, Jesus says that he's the fulfillment of the law. Yeah. So following him means that you, through him, fulfill the law. Amen. Amen. And then in verse 21 to 26, he tells us when and when not to be angry. Amen. That's right. With people. The right kind of anger, the wrong kind of anger. Then verses 27 to 30, he tells us to be morally pure. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Verses 31 and 32, he teaches about marriage and, and, and divorce. Verses 33 to 37 of chapter 5, he teaches about oaths. Yeah. That our words should be truthful. That we shouldn't have to swear. Amen? That's right. And then in verse 38 to 40, he teaches about retaliation. Don't yeah. retaliate. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen. Verses 43 to 48, he tells us, in line with that not retaliating, to love our enemies. Love your enemies. That's hard to do. Come on. In your own strength. Yeah. But, but, but you don't do it in your own strength. You do it in God's strength. That's because right. here's why. At one time, we were all God's enemies. That's right. And he loved us. Amen. And so we love them because we realize they are enemies because they are under the power of the devil. That's right. And if we could be used by God to show his love, yeah. to change their life, they can become our friend. Yeah. We can win them to Christ. Amen. But Jesus says, love your enemies. Because you know what, too? Your enemies, this life is the best they'll ever know. That's right. And if, if, if nothing else in the life to come, they should have a fond memory of you. That's right. That you were someone so different that even though they was out there, Make your life miserable. You didn't make theirs miserable. That's right. You tried to make theirs better. That's right. Then he goes on in chapter six, one through four, giving to the needy. How we should do that? Uh huh. And the right attitude to give it. In, in, in chapter five, verse fourteen, he, he gives the we call the Lord's prayer. It's really, it's real. It, it's, it's really a, a, a the model prayer. Yeah. How you model your prayers. Yeah. And then verses sixteen through eighteen, he talks about. Fasting and when you fast and how you fast, don't fast like the religious leaders who fast to be seen of men. But when you do it, don't don't let nobody know because you only you only want to impress your father. Do it for God. And then chapter six, verse 19, 24, he talks about laying up treasures in heaven. Yeah. Verse 25 to 34, be he teaches land. something oh so important. Be in land. Do not be anxious. That's right. Don't be worried <laughs> about your life. About the things you need because your father in heaven knows what you might need. And you just need to bring it to him. In chapter 7 verses 1 through 5, he talks about the right way to judge. Yes, sir. Sometimes people misunderstand and say, Jesus says don't judge. That's not right. He says if you do judge, judge right. Yes, sir. Because he says by the standard you judge others. You will be judged by that same standard. Amen? Amen. And he, he later goes on and tells you about times you need to judge. And then in verse 13 to 14, he says, the enter the narrow gate. Yeah. There's, a, there's a broad gate that leads to destruction. Narrow gate, that's Christ that leads to heaven. And most people don't enter that gate. That's right. Then verse 15 to 20, he says, he teaches that if you're really right with God, it's going to show in your life. Because every tree, every good tree, good. brings forth good fruit. That's right. And every bad tree brings forth bad fruit. Bad fruit. Yeah. Then sadly, in chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, those horrible words that far did. too many people are going to hear, they're going to say to him in that day, Lord, 
Lord. Come. And he's going to say, listen to this. Come on. He's going to say, I never knew you. So it's not like you got saved and lost it. That's right. See, when God saves you, he don't lose you. That's right. It, he don't lose you. It's, it's because they never were saved. That's right. They thought they were. But you know, the way you show you saved is you bring forth fruit that shows you are saved. And then he ends it in verses 24 to 27. But how you need to build your life. On the rock. And I, I preached on that sermon so many times that it is it's just etched in my mind. Come on. I can I can I can quote it. Come on. Therefore, therefore, everyone who hears these sayings of mine, yes, sir, and does it, I will show you yeah. who he's like. Come on. He is like a man. Yes, sir. Built his house huh. on a rock. Come on. And the rains descended. Yes, Floods sir. came. Uh, the winds blew. Beat on that house. Yeah. But it didn't fall. Why? Come on. Because it was founded. On the rock. On the rock. That's me, my word, my yeah. truth. But everyone that hears these sayings of mine. Yeah. Doesn't do it. Come on. He's like his man who built his house. Huh. On the sand. On the sand. And the winds descended. The floods came. The winds blew and beat on that house and it fell. Yeah. And great or complete or total was its ruin or its fall. Oh church, he's saying, look, oh, church. this sermon I just preached from five to the end of seven, if you hear it and do it, you build it on the rock. Yes, if you don't do it, you build it on sand. So, so we honor Jesus, oh church. We honor Jesus when we do the things that he tells us to do. Amen. Build your life on yeah. the rock. On the rock. Because all other ground is Seeking sinking sand. sand. Amen. Amen. And so the religious leaders didn't honor Jesus. They were jealous. Yeah. And when you are jealous of someone, it affects everything. Yes, it does. Your speech, your conduct, how you look at them. Uh. You look at them with a sky. <laughs> it's often a sign of insecurity. And fear that someone is doing better than you are. Watch out. Jealousy may present itself in a number of ways. Yeah. Some people they be possessive, try to tell you what to do and control you. Yeah. Or domineering. Yeah. Or abusive. Yeah. And, 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 and this creates an unhealthy environment. Especially if it's in a family setting. Yeah. And it results in all kind of emotional turmoil. And relational harm. Yeah. That sadly far too many experience. Because they don't know Jesus' word. They don't know his word. Also, it can indicate a number of problems, such as lack of communication or unresolved disagreements. Uh-huh. You see, both people in that relationship need to address whatever the underlying difficulties are, are and take God's avenue of dealing with that to make their relationship strong and better. Amen. You can be jealous of someone because they got things that you would like to have. Yeah. But oh church. Oh church. What can we do? Huh. Paul said to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3. Oh a powerful word that we need to realize. He says though we walk like human beings. Yeah. We don't fight like human beings. Uh -huh. Because the weapon of our warfare yeah. are not human. That's right. Or carnal, your oh, Bible right. say. Right. But they're mighty through God. Yeah. Through the pulling down of strongholds. Oh, oh. In other words, pulling down the way most, most people naturally think. Yeah. Casting down every Man. imagination Man. and everything that exalts itself yeah. against the knowledge of God Come on. and Christ. And bring how many thoughts? Every. Every thought, Every, every thought. To the obedience yes, sir. of Christ. Yes, sir. See, we honor him. Yeah. When we bring every thought yes, sir. captive and say, Lord, uh, does this thought please you? Come on. Does this thought obey you? That's right. If it doesn't, I'm gonna take it down. Yeah. And I'm gonna cast it off. 
because it doesn't please you. Oh, church. Oh, church. Oh, church. Oh, church. Oh, God. <laughs> God wants us to make the right choice for life. Amen. And honor Christ. Amen. With our life. Second, make the right choice for love and honor to the Father. Verse 42 to 44. Uh huh. But I know you, and you do not have the love of God in you. So Jesus is contrasting. He says, look, I, <laughs> I, 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 I know there's a difference because you don't have the love of God uh -huh. in you, but you look for the praise of men. Here's what he's saying. I know what you're thinking. Come on. I know what you're feeling. And I know you don't love God because you hate me. Come on. You want to kill me. You see, you show by your conduct that what you, what you profess is not true. Because God never told anybody to hate their enemy. That's right. God never told them to do that. And so they were, they, 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 had, to, they had to know that Jesus was calling them on the carpet. Uh, and Jesus says that they sit their seat, they sit in Moses' seat or Moses' chair. And he told the people to do what they to do what they say, but don't do what they do. Don't do according to their, de their deeds. That's in Matthew 23. He exposes the things that they do that is not true to the word of God. Mm -hmm. That their, 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 their motivation is not by the spirit of God. You see, as Christians. We become motivated by the overarching fruit of the Spirit. Yes, sir. In Galatians 5, right. Paul writes down the fruit singular yes, sir. of the Spirit, yes, and then he sir. gives a whole bunch of lists. Yes. And the first one is love, is love. because that's the controlling one. Yes, sir. Because the great commandment is love God that's right. and love your neighbor. That's right. And so the religious leaders didn't love God. They didn't love their neighbor, and it was seen in so many of their hypocrisies. Because you remember, the Bible says that you're to honor your father and mother, but, but they, they said, they made up a law, Matt, what Jesus talked about in Matthew 15, 1 through 9, where they could say, what I'm supposed to do to honor my father and mother, I'm not going to do it, because I'm going to give it supposedly to God. Yeah. So they invalidated God's command by making up their own command. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were selfish and self-centered. Oh, church. Oh, church. We cannot be that way. No, sir. It's like the man who told his wife, I got to go to church to do the Lord's work <laughs> every time she asked him to help with the children. Oh. Oh, that's not love. No. Now, sometimes you might have to go yeah. to help out if you were responsible for certain things. But every time she asked for help, Come on. you shouldn't be going to the church. You should be loving her yeah. as Christ loved the church. Yeah. Amen. So, so, so she come before the church. Yeah. Amen. 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 Come on. But you see, Phariseeism in our hearts will permeate everything, and it'll miss the truth. Come on. You remember the religious leaders? They got he. They they they, they told Jesus, "Look, your your disciples are picking picking grain to eat on the Sabbath day." Yeah. Cause and they said that was work, but but in the there was nothing in the in the, in the Old Testament that said they couldn't do that. Huh. And then also they said in Matthew nine eleven, why is your your teachers eating with sinners? Uh. You see, they didn't love people the way God did. That's they right. they felt like they were the holy crowd. Yeah, they sought honor from one another. They criticized Jesus for mingling with sinners. You see. Church, we just something we gotta realize. The Bible one, God calls us to be in the world, but not of it. In right. other words, we should interact with unsaved folk. Now, if if it was up, if it was folk we used to hang with back in the day, yeah. but we were going astray, come on, we might have to cut them off for a while. Yes, sir. Till we get strong. Amen. Amen. So so we, we cut them off for a while. But here's the thing. Our seek of loving God should not prevent us from reaching out to our friends, our relatives who are not saved. Amen. Because if we are true friend, then we'll be like Jesus. Yeah. You know what it was said about Jesus? He was uh, a friend of sinners. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He was a friend of sinners. Yes. Why? Because 
he had the love of God. Yeah. And so Jesus said, you guys, you guys don't even have the love of God in you. The love that's of God right. is not in you. So that's, that's why you do the things you do. But oh church, oh church, we gotta have the love of God. Amen. If you want to be like Jesus, we gotta be friend of sinners. Amen. A, a lady was talking with her her neighbor's young son, and she said to him, "Hey Tim, how is your baby brother? The baby had just come home from the hospital not long, a couple of weeks. He said, "Okay, I guess, but the baby sure is loud when he's crying. But my mommy said that God gave him to us from heaven. I guess." His crying is why God gave him away. <laughs> we have to understand understand things properly, amen? Amen. Amen. And then in verse 43, Jesus says, I've come in my Father's name. Yes, sir. And you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you receive. Him you will receive. Oh, here's, a, here's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, even though he came clearly showing he was from the Father. Come on. Because you remember in John chapter 3, he had a visitor. It, yeah. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. Yeah. And, and this came to Jesus, this one came to Jesus by night, and this is what he said. Rabbi. Uh-huh. We know that you are a teacher come from God. Yes, sir. But no one can do the signs that you do unless. God is with him. Yeah. So at least this Pharisee recognized yes, sir. that the Father was with Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, Jesus sir. was from the Father. Yes, sir. But you see, the sad reality of these people was their hearts were corrupt. Yeah. And then Jesus says, another will come. Yeah. And through the history of Israel, there was a bunch of false Christs who came. Yeah. All throughout the history. Some some indications were. From anywhere between 66 to 70, false Christ would come. And you know, Jesus even said in, a, in, a, in a Matthew 24 that there will be false Christ yes, sir. that will come and deceive many. And, in, and, and ultimately, Jesus says another will come in his own, one, own name. That is referring to the one great false Christ, That's right. the Antichrist. The anti and they will receive the man of sin, yeah. the man of lawlessness. As opposed to Jesus, because yeah. he come in his own name. Yeah. Jesus came in his father's name. Yes, he did. But they didn't want to believe him. No, sir. Oh, church. Oh, church. We have to learn to believe Jesus. Amen. In his word. In his word. And he says, verse 44, how can you believe? Who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God. Again, we talked about this earlier. That. The religious leaders would pat each other on the back. Yeah. And they did stuff to be seen of men. Uh -huh. And they, didn't, they, 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 they wanted people to, to, to come and praise them. But the Bible says they were concerned about what people say. Yeah. In Proverbs 29, 25, it says, The fear of man will prove to be a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Peer pressure is not new. No, sir. And peer pressure is not only relegated to our children and our young people. Peer pressure is something that affects all of us because we worry about how we gonna look to other people uh. and that's what stopped the people and the religious leaders from coming to Jesus to have life because they was worried about how it's gonna look uh. and even people today don't want to come to Christ yeah. because they worry about yeah. how it's gonna look yeah. but old church, old church. <laughs> it's gonna look good yes it will because you're going to really find out what life is really about. Yeah. You see, the fear of man has both physical and psychological snares. Uh -huh. Jesus said to the people in Matthew chapter, Luke chapter 12, verse 4 and 5, he says, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and afterwards can do nothing else. That's right. But be afraid of him who after your body has been killed has the ability to throw you into hell. Yes, you should fear him. Jesus was telling his disciples and preparing them for persecution that would come. And he said, don't worry about the religious leaders or others who could kill your physical body, but worry about the one who could punish you for all eternity. 
You see, Christians, especially us today, I fear it's more psychological than, than physical. In that what we see in our world is a desire to please people. Yeah. So we can be tempted to compromise our values. Yes, sir. To not speak up yeah. the truth. Yeah. To fear others and allow that fear to influence our decisions. Yes, sir. To have public opinion override the word of God. Uh. And sadly, too many are yielding to this. Yeah. Because they don't understand. They like the Pharisees who said, this man is not from God because he don't keep the Sabbath. Come on. That's what they said in John 19, 6. This man is not from God because he associates with sinners. But Jesus was from God. Yes, he is. And he did what was right. We have to do what's right, church. Yes, we do. We have to act right. Yes, sir. We have to live by the grace of God. Yes, sir. The life that he wants us to live. Yes, sir. But if there's anything that we are afraid of, and secret love is more than God, we will not be true to God. Amen. We will be true to what we love the most. Amen. Amen. And so we have to understand that we need to be true to God and God alone. alone. That's right. A youth pastor was speaking to his youth about unity in the church. This was some of the younger children who were five years and younger. Uh-huh. To the, 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 the true young youth folk. The pastor looked at the children and said, God wants us to be one. Be one. One of the youngest children who was four years of age immediately protested and said, I've already been one. I want to be five now. <laughs> the child had the right motive, but the wrong understanding. Amen. Amen. God wants us to have the right motive. And the right understanding. Yes, sir. And that's why in 1 Corinthians 4 or 5, he says, don't judge anything before the time. Wait until the Lord comes, and he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Yeah. You see, God wants to praise us. Yes, he does. When we stand before him. Amen. He wants to say, well done. Yes, yes. Thou good and faithful, and faithful servant. servant. Yeah. But we have to seek to please him. Make the right choices, church. Yes, sir. Choose you this day whom you going to serve. serve. Amen. Amen. And third and finally, the right choice for listening and humility. Listening to the Bible. Verse 45 to 47. Uh-huh. He says, do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accused you, Moses, in whom you trust. Jesus is not saying, of course, that Moses would literally be the one who accused them. But what he was saying is that the Jews uh, held in high regard, especially the Pharisees, the teachings of the Old Testament and the teachings of Moses. Because what he's talking about here is in incorporate all the Old Testament, mm -hmm. which sometimes would be called... Uh, the, the law, the prophets, and the psalms, and the writings, and many times would just be summarized by saying Moses. So Jesus was saying the word of God. But they had enlarged upon what the word of God says, as we talked about before, because they used the wrong uh, 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 interpretation of scripture. But here's what they believed. That God gave them a secret system of understanding Moses. And they felt this system would give them a path to righteousness. And that path would lead to them gaining personal worthiness. Now listen to that. Personal worthiness before God. That's what Paul said in Romans 10, 3. They went about not understanding God's righteousness. They went about trying to seek their own righteousness. And they even thought that they could be helped by the Holy Spirit, which they called the Ruach. Hakadash, the Holy Spirit, they can be found worthy if they search and they and they study the scriptures, and so that's why they established schools and had instructions all over in the villages, both oral and written, and that's why they had two schools of Jewish teaching. You remember hearing about the schools of Shammai and the schools of Hillel, 
because they thought that by studying they would they would gain eternal life. Uh, but Jesus said in verse 46, but if you believe Moses, mm -hmm. you would believe me. Yeah. For he wrote about, about me. me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Uh, so he's he's speaking clearly to that self-deception. They didn't really believe Moses, even though in the Old Testament, there are over 300 prophecies that point clearly to Christ. As I said earlier, when the wise men from the East came uh, and said, where is he born king of the Jews? They told him where he was born. That's right. But they didn't go see him. That's right. They didn't believe. Even though all these prophecies were fulfilled in Jesus, and yet they didn't believe. They had a high view of the law. They believed the Pharisees and the angels. They believed in the day of judgment. They believed in the resurrection of the dead. They believed in a promised Messiah, the son of David, who would come and to overthrow the power that would and liberate his people. And that there would be an end of days with the victory of God and his people. Uh, so they were orthodox. Yeah. They were orthodox. But you see, you can believe the right thing uh, and still miss the right person. Come on. And that's what happens sometimes today in the church. Come on. People believe the right thing, but they miss the right person. Because it leads to Jesus. Yeah. It paints the picture of Jesus. And they were concerned only about themselves. But the good thing is, God always has a remnant. Are you aware of that church? Come on. God always has a group of people. Who's going to want to do what he says and do what's right? Yes, sir. And even amongst the religious leaders, you remember in Luke 13, 31, that certain of the Pharisees warned Jesus to leave because Herod was trying to kill him. Yes. So these Pharisees were concerned about Jesus' welfare. And you remember in Acts 5, 34, the great Gamaliel stood up and told the council that they had to give Jesus a, 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 a proper hearing and that they should not condemn Jesus in an improper way. And then you remember the one who came to Jesus by night? Nicodemus? Uh -huh. He came by night. And then later on, we see some of the things he said about Jesus. He called Jesus a rabbi, uh -huh. which means he actually respected him. He said the things you do are done. It's clearly done by God. Yeah. And then Jesus talked to him about what he really needed. He needed a supernatural birth. Yes, sir. He needed to be born from above. Yes, sir. He needed to be changed by God. Oh, yeah. And he didn't understand it just like the Jews didn't understand, the religious leaders didn't understand that Moses had prophesied in Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, that God was going to circumcise the heart. Now, what that means? Change your heart. Change your heart. Make your spiritual alive. The same thing in Jeremiah 4.4. 4. And then in Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. Yes, sir. He clearly talks about what would be seen in the new birth. Yeah. A new heart, a new, new spirit. Heart. Take away the heart of stone, give yeah. a heart of flesh. And the person would live according to God's statutes. Yeah. Oh, church. Oh, church. And Nicodemus started to grow toward Christ because... John chapter 7, Nicodemus stood up for Jesus and challenged the investigators about how they were unrighteously judging Jesus. And then in John chapter 19, verse 39 through 40, we see that Nicodemus had crossed over and belief in Jesus because he, along with the other Pharisee, Joseph of Arimathea, yeah. took the body of Jesus Yes, sir. And place it yes, sir. in the tomb. Yes, sir. But by and large, Come just on. like people today, Come on. far too many misunderstand yes. what the scripture is trying to teach. Yes, sir. They miss old church. Old church. They miss the right choice for listening, and humility is the Bible. Yes, sir. What is it saying? What is it teaching? Who is it pointing to? Jesus. It's pointing to Jesus. Jesus. 
They pointed to Christ. Moses' yes. writings were prophetic, pointing people to Jesus. Yes. And they missed it. And yet they missed it. Oh, church. Oh, church. Jesus did all he could, and even as he does today. Yes, he did. To try to get people yeah. to hear yeah. what God yeah. is saying. Yeah. But God is not silent. No, he's not. He has spoken. Yes. But you have to choose. Yeah. The right choice for life is to honor Christ. Yeah. The right choice for love is to honor the Father. Oh, yeah. The right choice for listening and humility is to honor the word of God. To do what the Bible says. Yes, sir. One afternoon, the great manager, Casey Stinger, was managing the Mets. His starting pitcher showed signs that he was getting tired. As one pitch after another missed the strike zone, the crowd was getting anxious. And they groaned. Then they started hissing. Then they started booing. You got to understand the way uh, New York folks are. <laughs> They're a little tougher than us in the Midwest. Uh. Finally, when the cat calls and boos became deadening, the manager went out to the mound to replace the left-handed pitcher. But the pitcher said to the manager, I want to pitch myself out of this hole that I'm in. Why take me out now? The manager said, well, in case you haven't heard, people are beginning to talk. And what they're saying is not good about you and you staying in. But church, we have to understand, people will always talk. Yes, sir. But the question is, do they have the right information? That's right. To make the right decision. Huh. You see, if we listen to God's word, yeah. if we listen to the truth yeah. that he has for us, yes, sir. oh, then, then oh, that, yeah. that's, that's what really matters because then we can make the right choices in life. Oh, church, it's oh, so church. important that we make the right choices in every area of life. Yes, sir. That God may bless us in ways yeah. that we don't even know is possible. Amen. When we listen to his word. Amen. We don't have to listen to the crowd. That's right. We don't have to listen to people. That's right. We don't listen to their boos or their hisses. That's right. Or their, or their criticisms. We listen to God. Mm. And we'll have and we'll find Jesus. Amen. Aren't you glad? Yes, sir. That he has found you. Yes, sir. And aren't you glad that he has changed you? Yes, sir. And aren't you glad for the choice that he helped you make? Because we couldn't do it on our own. Amen. Without him, we would never have made it. That's right. Never have made it on our own. That's why Jesus said in John 6, all that the Father gives me yes, sir. will come to me. Come. No man can come to me unless the Father who first draw them. Aren't you glad Amen. that God has drawn us to himself? Yes, sir. We can celebrate and honor and praise his name oh, yeah. and let others know about what God wants to do in their life. In their oh life. church. Oh church. If you want to be like the Bereans, be like those who are faithful. Won't you stand as we make a moment of commitment, we have a time of commitment to say, I'm gonna commit myself to doing what the Lord has called me to do. Amen. Amen.